We're in a major deer yard up in northern Maine, up around the Moosehead Lake area. And if I had to guess, this area in the wintertime is home to two or three hundred deer. Another one coming across. <laughs> you want me to clean my windshield? <laughs> well, my name is Scott McClellan, and I'm a wildlife biologist with the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. I am responsible for covering 2.9 million acres of the state of Maine. And part of my job is to understand the needs of, of white-tailed deer and track their progress throughout the winter months, which helps us better understand the mortality rate at the end of the winter. One of the deer that you just videoed had ear tags in its ears, and that's one of the ones that we had a radio collar on uh, a few years ago. The radio collars were equipped with a drop-off mechanism to uh, come off the animal on a certain date. So that is a deer that wore a radio collar for a couple years, but it's interesting to know that that deer is still alive. And we have information on where that animal would have gone back to during the, the summer and fall months. Based on our recent research, some of the deer that we put radio collars on here in the Moosehead Lake area had traveled 40 miles to get back to their summer range. And that's a learned behavior that got passed on by the older and more experienced deer. When we're managing for deer yards, there are several things that we look for that would qualify it as such. One of them is softwood crown closure. The amount of mature softwood trees that are in close proximity to each other and that are old enough and tall enough to have accumulated enough limbs to intercept snow before it reaches the ground. So ideally, I want to be able to look up towards the sky and not see much of it. I'm going to measure the snow which is about 11 and a half inches um, where I'm standing here. Now I don't have to walk very far um, in that direction and the snow is going to be probably about 25 inches. Once a week we go around to these deer yards and we measure the amount of snow that's in areas, closed in areas with good crown closure like where I'm standing and then we'll go into those areas that are that are opened up and have poor crown closure. And we actually calculate a winter mortality rate um, based, on, based on those measurements. It actually looks like an adult doe with three lambs. Triplets would be certainly rare, but not completely unheard of. Or it's possible that she has two of the twins there and has kind of fostered another one whose mother may have died at an earlier date. And the chance of all three of them surviving an average northern Maine winter is not good. There's a world of difference between where we are in northern Maine and the rest of New England. The climate is the biggest difference. You know, the winters are much colder, much windier, and the snow accumulates much higher and for a longer period of time. So here in northern Maine, deer generally have to find these winter yards and live there somewhere between 90 and 125 days which is far different than southern Maine. Southern Maine deer only need to find a wintering area for you know, between 20 and 60 days. See, that deer isn't willing to 
step into the deeper snow, it knows it's going to sink a lot more. So it's trying to reach what it can from that trail. And she's standing on a fairly well-established deer trail. And because of that, she's not exerting a lot of energy as long as she stays on that trail. 40 to 50 inches of snow, which is not uncommon in northern Maine, is too much for a deer. So this network of trails is very important. Think of when you are on snowshoes and you're breaking trail and there's three feet of snow. It's a lot more exhausting to do that than it is if there are 10 people in your group and you're the last one walking on everybody else's track. So that network of trails allow the deer to access food, cover, and escape predation. They know these trails like you know all the streets in your neighborhood. You notice that most of the time when they're stopped and they get ready to take a step, they wag their tail once. Just an interesting white-tailed deer tip. See that? The most important attributes to a deer yard would be shelter, food, and travel corridors. That means conifer-dominated mature softwood. And here in northern Maine, we have northern white cedar, balsam fir, red spruce, hemlock, and white pine. The two most valuable species would be northern white cedar, by far, and hemlock. So. A landowner trying to manage for deer would be sensitive to the removal of softwood trees and try to promote the growth of immature, non-mature softwood trees. They have two different types of hair that they grow. They have a summer coat and they have a winter coat. Their summer coat is solid reddish brown shafts of hair with no under coat, no under fur. Their winter coat, which they have for many more months of the year than their summer coat, is hair that is hollow inside to act as, as insulation, and it does have an undercoat. It's like a woolly undercoat, and they actually have small muscles that can adjust the orientation of the hair to maximize the insulative value. Notice this balsam fir tree. The first six or seven feet of the limbs are chewed down and browsed heavily. The tree almost looks diseased because of how, how browsed it's been. So this situation would mimic deer populations in southern New England, where it's problematic for some landowners to grow desirable species. If your goal is to manage your woodlot for a long-lived sugar maple stand, but the deer browse it as soon as it reaches you know, 10 or 12 inches high, that doesn't make some landowners very happy. In certain ways, a, a deer yard situation in northern Maine mimics the same problems that the rest of New England faces. We manage by districts here in northern Maine and many of the northern districts were trying to achieve five to ten deer per square mile and we're far below that so one of the important parts of my job is to work with some of the larger landowners that have important deer yards on their properties to try to manage the deer yard in such a way that it will be there tomorrow be there a decade from now and will be there long after I retire it's a work in progress we want deer for hunters to pursue in the fall. We want deer around for people to view when they're out trolling a pond in northern Maine and to be able to watch a doe and its fawn feeding along the shore. There's a lot of value to that. The winters of 2008 and 2009 were two extremely severe winters where we lost a very large percentage of our deer herd in northern Maine. And since that time, the deer herd has actually rebounded. So the species is a very, very resilient species. As long as we can continue working positively with landowners, 
uh, we're optimistic that this species will be around for future generations. Thank you.